What's up everybody, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has received its second update since launch and we have more info on the DLC that will be released later this year. Nintendo doesn't actually give us a lot of details on the update, or any at all actually. They give us an incredibly vague statement saying adjustments have been made to make for a more pleasant gaming experience. If that sounds familiar at all, it's because the first update which was available on launch day said the same thing. But also included, the Nintendo eShop has been made accessible from the title screen for the purchase of the expansion pass. For more information about the expansion pass, please see the official website. So what does this mean exactly? Well, during the first update, a lot of people thought it was going to help steady the frame rate. I'm sure some of you have experienced frame drops while in places like Korok Forest. We've recently learned that to deal with these frame issues, Nintendo actually uses what is called dynamic resolution scaling, where they essentially drop the resolution by 10% in order to keep a higher frame rate during intense scenes. 10% is such a low percentage, most people would never even notice the difference in resolution, and it lets the game render out a few more frames, so the lag isn't as game breaking. I did notice one gameplay change from the first update though. I could be wrong, but when I first played the game before downloading the first update, I'm more than positive that we could jump anywhere and use the paraglider. After the update, it changed so that you need to be jumping off of higher ground in order to use it. The higher ground could be anything from a mountainside, a cliff, a rock, or a hill with even the smallest of slopes or incline. It isn't a huge game-changing mechanic, and I'm not even sure why they changed it, but I do know that I can't pop out the paraglider on level or flat surfaces now. For this new update, I have yet to notice a difference in anything, and the game's biggest issues are how much it rains. You can watch my video on the top 10 best and worst of Breath of the Wild for more things that people want changed in Breath of the Wild, but if they were to take in fan feedback to change anything, it would definitely be making it rain less. Is anything more annoying than being halfway up a mountain and it begins to rain, so you slide all the way down and have to stand and wait around for it to stop? If I had to guess, I would say maybe they allowed the dynamic resolution scaling to go down by 15% instead of just 10 in order to allow for an even steadier frame rate during those intense scenes. Remember, Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch is at 900p and the Wii U version is at 720p. That is a 50% difference in resolution. So if you're playing the Switch, as long as the dynamic resolution doesn't drop below 50%, you're still playing at a higher resolution than the 720p on the Wii U. A lot of people have even stated that they can't even tell a difference between the two versions. But I know a lot of people can, so dropping the pixel count too much will pull some people out of the game. So a sudden large drop of pixels could pull some people out of the game. But this is something that Microsoft, Sony, and other third-party developers have been doing for a long time. I believe Uncharted 4 and Halo 5, which are flagship titles for the Xbox and PlayStation, do this as well. So seeing Nintendo use the same ideal to improve the experience for Breath of the Wild players is good to see. Alternatively, they could go in and just slightly lower the detail or draw distance of certain areas in order to help with the frame rate, instead of lowering the resolution. Aside from the resolution, the Nintendo Switch also has slightly better shadows, draw distance, and details than the Wii U version, so lowering these may not even be that noticeable for dense areas. If you want, you can look up side-by-side -side comparisons to see all of these differences for yourself. So other than the frequency of the rain and trying to improve frame rate, I haven't really noticed anything that they could do to, in their words, make for a more pleasant gaming experience. They could have possibly changed some of the language and dialogue in the game. I know the game has a lot more references or jokes about sex than Nintendo fans are used to, so to please the parents, they could have dealt with that. But let me know what you think has been changed, or what you would like to be changed in a future update. Finally, we have the info on the new DLC. We knew from the announcement the smaller DLC would be coming in summer, with the larger DLC coming in winter. Now, we know the summer DLC will release in August, and the winter DLC will release in December. I'm sure we can expect an actual release date and more details on the DLC to come during E3. Maybe even a small look into the dungeon. These are just my hopes, but I want a return of the traditional themed dungeons. Something like Stone Tower Temple or the usual end game dungeon would be great. 
something that takes elements from all of the previous dungeons and puts them into one, again with Stone Tower Temple being a great example. It had water, fire, and grass themes all mixed in in its own unique way. Also, Ganon's castle in Ocarina of Time was literally just a bunch of mini dungeons combined into one. But this is just speculation. As of now, we still aren't entirely sure what the DLC is going to be though. Awanuma has said that he has spent so much time creating this huge world of Hyrule in Breath of the Wild and that he feels some areas still aren't complete and he would like to add more to them. So chances of DLC that takes us to another world like the Twilight Realm, Lowrule, Termina, or another area isn't likely going to happen as it goes against what Alanuma said, which again, he wants to add more to the world and flesh out what is already built, not build a new world or area. However, if it was a new world, I could see it being something like finding a platform in a cave that just opened up and taking it to this new world. It could be similar to the Mirror of Twilight being the gateway to the Twilight Dungeon in Twilight Princess or the cracks taking you to Low Rule in A Link Between Worlds. But again, I doubt this will happen. I think it will be something that will let us play through the past memories as Link or Zelda while they are on their crusade in the past. And you have to go to all of the locations of the memories in the present. Or a new dungeon that is unlocked similar to how Wolf Link Amiibo is used in Twilight Princess. But I'm interested in knowing your thoughts on all of this. What do you hope for with DLC and what do you actually think it's going to be? And remember, if you come across any updates or certain changes that you would like to see in Breath of the Wild for a future update, comment below and let us know. I want to thank you all for watching this video and welcome to the end slate. If you're a fan of these videos, you can follow me on Twitter for updates on future videos at Game Over Jesse. Please subscribe, like, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you would like to watch even more of my videos, click the video to the left or let me know what types of videos you would like to see in the future. I would like to take the rest of this time to thank all of my Patreon supporters. If you're a fan of this channel and would also like to help us out by becoming a Patreon supporter and get some awesome rewards for yourself, like being a part of my videos, shoutouts, custom avatars, giveaways, being added to our private discord to chat during live streams, and more, please visit patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where even smaller supporters at the $1 level will get you some awesome stuff. Finally, a huge thank you to this month's supporters, George says hi, Link uses the Triforce, Transcendent Sacred Courage, Glenn Cassio, Prey Warrior, Lunarium, Chris Gasparin, Harris Priest, Lovable Christy, Key of Time 15, Jerome Measure, Daryl Quinnen, Furzen 16, Cadron, Magic Tech Review, and The Itch Network. <laughs>